The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Global warming is no longer a theory or prediction. Sea level is rising, glaciers are melting, and long-standing weather patterns are becoming unreliable. As the pace of change accelerates, scientists race to understand how the globe's climate systems function and what the future holds in store. At the present time, of course, we're extremely concerned about what past climates were like because hopefully if we knew that, we could better predict what might be going to happen in our present circumstances. In their quest to reconstruct ancient weather patterns, some scientists look to a tiny marine alga known as Emiliana Huxleyi, or Emily for short. Each year, Emily forms giant milky white blooms at the surface of the world's oceans. As the algal cells die, they sink to the bottom in a phenomenon known as marine snow. There's a sort of steady rain of debris comes down from in the top of the water. Uh, debris from algae and zooplankton and bits of fish and all sorts of things. And that residue gradually builds up to these meters and meters of sediment. In there, there are the remains of these organisms, uh, little fossils. But they're also what we call the chemical fossils, the, the molecules that have been part of the living systems, the living organisms, and have managed to survive being eaten by all the bacteria and so on in the water column. And then there are, of course, the molecules left by the bacteria when they died. So that whole record is in there waiting for us to poke around in. Like archaeologists digging for fossilized bones, oceanographers drill deep into the seafloor looking for the chemical remains of long-dead organisms like Emily. These so-called fossil molecules are so tiny they can't even be seen with a microscope, but they provide scientists with the keys to unlock secrets of Earth's ancient climate. One of the most uh, rewarding places we look for molecular information um, is in the cores that we can drill out of the ocean floor. And what you find then is uh, that the sediment in the core tube is actually often very nicely layered. You can see different colored layers. Now these layers correspond to where the sediment has been laid down over, say, a few thousand years for a centimeter of sediment, uh, and then another few thousand years for the next one, and so on. Scientists use chemical solvents and a microwave oven to pull fossil molecules out of the sediments where they have been entombed. Then they catalog what they find. Based on just a teaspoon of mud, scientists can actually describe life in the ancient seas, including details of which organisms lived or died, and very importantly, how warm or cold the water was at the ocean's surface. That's because Emily creates fat molecules called alkanones, whose backbone structure changes with the water temperature. Some alkanones have two double bonds, and some have three. When Emily makes these molecules, uh, it makes it um, in a different, makes them in a different ratio when the water is warm than from when the water is cold. And so, because these two molecules are preserved, more or less the same sort of amount in the environment, we can look in the bottom sediments and measure the amounts of these two compounds. And if there's a, a lot of the one with, uh, with three double bonds compared with the one with two, we know the water was cold and the other way around if it was warm. So we've actually been able to calibrate that and um, that means we can actually measure the ratio carefully and read off a temperature like say 17 degrees Celsius. Scientists can use fossil alkanones to track the temperature of seawater back thousands or even millions of years almost anywhere in the world's oceans. That's a boon for climate researchers because differences in ocean temperatures largely drive the world's major wind and rain systems. 
the thing that really controls our climate is, of course, the, the ocean temperatures um, and the way those are distributed around the world. We can begin to think about what the climate was like in the past. Thanks in part to fossil molecules, we now know that climate has changed many times in the past, sometimes slowly, sometimes dramatically, over the span of only tens to hundreds of years. But important questions remain. What role do changes in ocean temperatures play in these climate swings? What factors determine whether change is gradual or sudden? If we knew the answers to such questions, we would be a step nearer to being able to predict our own future climate. To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.